everyone. Welcome back to the 2.30 to 3 p.m. session of the 2021 Open Simulator Community Conference. In this session, we are pleased to introduce a presentation called Animesh is Coming. Our speaker is Kayaker Magic, and Kayaker brought more than four decades of real-life programming experience to writing scripted objects for OpenSim. He teaches classes every week on using the 3D modeling program Blender to create objects in world. Definitely check those out. He's been learning how to use Animesh to increase the functionality of objects while decreasing their lag on systems. A little housekeeping, check out our website found at conference.opensimulator.org for his speaker bio, as well as details of sessions and future things scheduled throughout this conference. The session is being live streamed and recorded, so if you have any questions or comments during the session, you may send tweets to at OpenSimCC with the hashtag OSCC21. So welcome everybody here and on YouTube. Let's begin the session. Kayaker, it's up to you. Hello, thank you for that great intro. <laughs> As you heard, I've been uh, uh, excited about uh, Animesh. It's been available in Second Life for a while, and uh, we got it, it seems, only recently on, on OpenSim. And I don't think it's been uh, used very much yet. And, and so the whole point of this talk is I'm hopefully not going to read my slides to you. I'll let you read them. And I'm going to drag out a bunch of things. Uh, and uh, the first couple are not going to be Animesh. I'm going to explain the past. And then I'm going to drag out a bunch of Animesh things. And the whole point is to get all the creators here in OpenSim excited like me to make uh, more Animesh objects, which is going to make our experience much better. And as you heard, it's going to make uh, the uh, the experience uh, less laggy on the servers. And I'm always trying to be nice to the servers. But before I get to Animesh, let me show you a few things that uh, that are not Animesh. And the idea is that uh, I want I want to talk about what did we do in the past? How did we animate things? And uh, it, it seems a shame sometimes that that uh, creators in in Second Life and OpenSim went to tremendous efforts to make things animated when uh, you know the right way to do it probably would have been Animesh all along. This particular critter here is uh, a dinosaur that I made. And I uh, animated the legs by uh, doing something that's called um, a puppeteer animation. Oh, perhaps you heard the step. Oh, I forgot that she makes noise when her feet land. Scare me when she walks. But uh, a puppeteer animation means that you make something out of prims, and uh, each joint has to be a separate prim. So uh, the uh, in her case, uh, she's got a thigh bone and a uh, uh, and a uh, foreleg bone and a, and a and a foot bone, and each one of those prims is is a separate uh, uh, object that was linked together. And then you have to write a mountain of script in order to make them move in that natural way. And it's a tremendous amount of work, and it's a shame that graphic systems should be able to do this with uh, with uh, uh, rigged uh, meshes. And we finally have the ability to do that with Animesh. So that's one form of animation that that is bad on the server because the all of these uh, these parts have to have extra vertices in order to to make them complete, and and uh, and then you have to have a tremendous amount of a script to move them around. And the script uses up server time, and then it also uses up a tre tremendous amount of bandwidth, sending messages to all the viewers saying, "Move this leg bone, move that foot bone, move this uh, bone, move that bone." So there's a lot of communication burning up the internet to make those legs move. And Animesh is going to be better. But before I tell you why Animesh is better, let me tell you about another form of uh, of animation that people used a lot and the dinosaur uses this let's call her sue uh and this isn't the three-headed dog guarding uh, hades uh in order to make her head turn back and forth uh, i used something called transparency animation where i actually made how many heads is this i i've forgotten it's uh six heads and and two jaws or or maybe four jaws and 
as she looks around, I have to make different heads uh, transparent and other heads uh, visible in order to make it look like she's turning her head. And this uses up a lot of system resources because it turns out that to send a message uh, to make uh, to change a transparency is called a is a large uh, packet of data. To move uh, a bone, uh, a prim, is a small packet. But doing transparency animation. Uh, uses up a lot of bandwidth, sending messages to make different parts uh, transparent. So that's uh, two forms of animation uh, that we've used in the past. There's another one that is, uh, you're going to think this looks about the same. Do you see the blue critter here? Uh, this blue critter uses something called uh, Sculpty animation. And as a matter of fact, if you look in the Second Life Wiki, they're going to tell you, don't do this. And in Sculpty animation, what actually happens is every time one of these legs move, I, I, I change the sculpt. So each leg has like six different sculpts and they're switching back and forth between them all. And it turns out this uses a, a, a large packet of information. It uses up a lot of bandwidth. And it also used to cause problem for the physics engine. But fortunately, we can make uh, the legs uh, phantom now. And I think they aren't a big burden on the physics engine like they used to be. So maybe it's not so bad that I use this form of animation. But it's also a lot of scripting work and a lot of bandwidth. And uh, that's, this is all fixed by, by using um, Animesh. By the way, I'm not going to teach you Animesh, uh, how to do Animesh in the next uh, hour, or I mean uh, 10 minutes or however much time I have left. Oh, I have uh, something that I'm trying to set up here. This is uh, um, a form of animation that actually works pretty good in, in second in Second Life and Open Sim, and this is texture animation. Uh, the advantage of texture animation is that it uses uh, resources on the viewer, so the viewers can make textures slide around or make them uh, 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 animated in several different ways, rotating and sliding and then uh, showing uh, cells. And so a uh, 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 if you're if you're if you're good with uh, with designing UV maps, you can use this to do all sorts of amazing things. Like I made the the lava in this uh, mesh object flow, and I've used it to make lights that blink by moving a texture through a light bulb uh, uh, more rapidly than this. And if the texture has black spots and white spots in it, then the light blinks on and off. And then the viewer makes the light blink and the server doesn't have to do the timing work and the server doesn't have to send messages over the internet and, and bog down the bandwidth in, or, in order to just make a light blink. And you're not going to believe that this is texture animation. It's sort of a combination of what I showed you before, this flag. Uh, it's sort of a combination of, uh, of uh, transparency animation and texture animation where there's actually uh, two flags there and and they're, each one is becoming opaque and transparent in the right order to make it look like the flag is flapping. But the the animation, the changing of the textures is done using texture animation. So the server is doing all the work there and making the flag look like uh, uh, the server is waving it, but it's not. So that's actually something that worked out uh, pretty well before um, we uh, when we didn't have uh, uh, Animesh. So that's more than enough time on uh, on the past. Another thing I've heard people say is that uh, NPCs are the same thing as Animesh, right? We already have NPCs. Why do we need Animesh? Well, there's a lot of reasons. I'm just going to get rid of uh, this uh, dinosaur here, which at the moment, he won't let me. I must be clicking on the um, the walls. Um, the NPCs have a lot of problems, and the first one is is that uh, only certain people, like uh, uh, region owners or region estate managers, are allowed to uh, uh, to start uh, NPCs. 
And so as a mer merchant, I can't sell an NPC on the Kitely market because a lot of people will get it and discover that they don't have permission to use it. And what is, I see a comment going by there, but I can't read it. Right, uh, there, are, there are pros and cons for both. The, 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 uh, uh, the, the NPCs are kind of hard on the server. They're almost as, as, as hard on the server as having another person show up at, at your venue. Whereas an Animesh uh, is, a, uh, is just another mesh prim. And once you download a, an, a, 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 an animation into it, then it continues running without the server having to send it any more commands and without any bandwidth. And so that's, uh, I, th I think uh, you're going to find Animesh to be much easier on the server because you're, you're, down, you're, you're distributing the processing for making something move into, into the viewers and leaving the server alone for, for doing the things the server does good, like the physics and, and organizing things and telling everybody what they're supposed to be seeing next. So Animesh is not the same as NPCs, and I think uh, in many ways they're a lot better. So how do we, oh, there's one more form of animation that I didn't mention. And that is, uh, you're probably familiar with, uh, uh, it's possible to, to make something spin uh, using a, uh, a LSL call called a set, uh, um, oh, target omega. And so it's easy to make something spin uh, and the viewer does all the work. And so this is great on the server. And I've seen people try and build uh, machines this way and it works great on, on circular parts, but it can't do reciprocal motion. And that's a shame because people want to build models of steam engines. And I'm going to, uh, to click on this and okay, that stopped. So you can't do reciprocal motion with target omega. Wait a minute, <laughs> that's going up and down. So this actually is an animesh object. And so I can make it spin around and I can also make it move back and forth. And I'm, I'm discovering that uh, it's, it's even easier to make animesh machines than it is to make, uh, to make uh, rigged clothing. And so that's a, uh, a wonderful advantage of uh, another wonderful advantage of uh, of Animesh. So how do you, I want everyone here who at least who is a, a, a creator to learn how to do this for the benefit of our servers and for the benefit of each other. And so I use Blender and, and the answer to the question, if anybody asks you, say, do you know, can Blender do, and the answer is yes, before, before they finish the question, because Blender can do everything. <laughs> but it's not always that easy. And, and when I wrote this list, I thought, well, it's easy. I, e even I learned it. You make a 3D model, uh, blah, blah, blah. You do all these steps. It's like, oh my God, there are more steps there than I remember. And and you say, okay, well, I'm willing to learn all those steps. And then you discover there are a few other problems. Um, well, but let me, let me get to that in another slide. There are a bunch of tools to make uh, things better. For example, there's a tool, Avastar, that's been around for a while. Uh, but the Avastar people pissed me off, uh, and I assume a lot of other people, because it took them two years to come out with a version of Avastar for Blender 2.8. I'm told uh, that it's buggy and it's gotten more expensive. And fortunately that two year delay caused there to be a um, some competition. And there's a product called Bento Buddy, which I can't recommend, but I hear good things about it. And among other things, I'm glad to see the, the Avastar monopoly broken by somebody else. And so I think that is, that is a good move. But I'm a cheapskate. And I, I and I especially refuse to pay uh, uh, Avastar nowadays because they they took my money once and then they didn't give me an, a new version or even offer me an upgrade for two years. So I've been trying to find out how can I just use Blender because the answer to the question is can Blender do it? Yes, Blender can do anything. So I've been 
been learning, uh, or if, if learning from many other people, of course, and discovering by myself how to get Blender to do everything. Um, Avastar used to be free updates, but starting with Blender 2.8, they uh, I think they charge uh, a forty dollars for a copy and then twenty dollars a year to keep your subscription uh, working. That's the it's getting more expensive part. So, uh, so once you you have made a mesh uh, and you have rigged it, uh, the next step is animating it. And uh, I've used Quavimator for what seems like uh, a decade or more. Uh, but of course, it only works on avatars, and it's very old, and it's no longer supported, and it doesn't handle uh, the the new bones in the in the in the bento uh, body, and. And so I can't use it anymore. I'm forced to learn something else. Now, Avastar has some very impressive looking tools for making animations, but uh, I haven't used them. I'm hoping that, that Bento Buddies has tools like that. And if you try and use Blender, and Blender, of course, can do anything. Blender knows how to make animations. So if you, if you try and use Blender, it's going to... Uh, to uh, 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 it, it's gonna not it's not it, it doesn't work out very well. It needs a plugin like Avastar to help you, it, unless you're such a cheapskate as me. There's ways to use Blender to make animations and then tweak them to fix the problems. They're, and it, the problems are all coordinate system problems. And I have a friend, Allies, who may be here today who's working on a new plugin that he's going to give away for free for Blender that saves animation files correctly. And he has a, um, a version of that uh, available at that URL that you can play with a pre-release version. So you heard me say that I, uh, I like building, uh, I found it easy to build machines. So here is a, um, a dirt bike I'm working on. And the plan with the dirt bike is, is that this is a single prim, and yet it has all the parts necessary, uh, moving parts that are moved not by being separate prims and moving the prims, they're moved by making, um, uh, by making animation files. So there's an animation file that makes the, the front and the rear wheels bounce up and down. And if I click on that, uh, they bounce slower and slower depending on which animation file it's running. Uh, there's an animation to turn the wheel left and turn the wheel right and so on. And there's even an animation to make the, uh, the wheel spin. That's not spinning yet. Oh, that's not it either. Uh, somehow I, I skipped over the wheel spinning. But here's all of the rules. Actually, I keep finding more rules that Linden Labs never seems to do anything in in the the logical way. They always take something that they they had before and they kludge it until it it kind of does something new. So uh, instead of giving us a better uh, system avatar, they they kludged it with wearable avatars, and the system avatar is still there underneath it and invisible and wasting CPU cycles. They uh, they could have given us mesh a long time ago, and instead they did a kludge called uh, Sculpties. And they could have um, done uh, Animesh as a new type of object, but instead they sort of kludged the, the mesh avatars until they they didn't have to be worn to be working. And so we ended up with all these funny rules. You can only use the, the bento bone names. And so if you were to look inside this motorcycle, you would find that it has a pelvis because every avatar is required to have a pelvis. And then it has a torso bone, which is used to turn the steering wheel left and or the handlebar left and right. And then it has a chest bone, which is used to cause the... Um, uh, the, the 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 springs to compress up and down as as the motorcycle runs over bumps, and then it uses the neck bone to spin the wheel around. And I keep laughing about this, but I've never tried it. If I was to run this on an avatar, it would make your head spin around instead of the wheel. And then the the uh, uh, the rear wheel and the frame are bouncing up and down using an M tail bone, 
and the, the rear wheel spins on one of the M tail uh, uh, bones as well. So you have to find a way to contort the system uh, bones or to, you have to use the system bone names, but rule number three up there, I think, is that you have to use, you have to obey the hierarchy. So you're not allowed to have the chest bone and the and the and the torso bone each doing something different because whenever the torso bone rotates, it rotates the chest bone with it. And so you have to obey the hierarchy. And in order to make the rear wheels turn, I had to use a bone, M tail one, that is independent from the chest. At any rate, it's the the rules just go on and on, and I shouldn't even uh, talk about them all, but they make my life miserable. Ah, here's a uh, a fun slide. The way Linden Labs apparently did this is if you load a, an animesh and it's missing some bones, it inserts the bones for you in the right order. So if you put the bones out of order, they get moved back into order, which causes your, your mesh to be contorted unless you obeyed the hierarchy. And if you don't have bones like uh, I have a whale. Oh, and here I'll, I'll drag the whale out here for you to look at it. I have a whale and of course whales, as you know, don't have uh, legs. And I'm having the. Um, the wall problem. Whales don't have legs, but uh, Linden Labs, as they loaded loaded my whale um, animesh, they felt uh, the need to um, to add legs. And so in that slide, you see that the whale has. Um, and uh, is that that whale flying out here yet? No. So the whale has. Uh, uh, leg bones, but they're just hanging down. They don't, uh, they they aren't animated by any of my an animations, so I never noticed that that somebody stuck them in. And some of these objects, it's really fun to watch them at work because the uh, uh, well, and the, the, these red pictures were made by using the the uh, developer menu in in Firestorm to uh, to make the 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 bone, what is it called? I think it's called the the collision skeleton visible. And so it's fun to watch some of these things bounce around and and do, do go through strange contortions because uh, I made something that that wasn't supposed to be a uh, a uh, 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 an avatar, and yet there's an avatar body inside it. So the uh, these rules, uh, they 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 make my job miserable because there's all sorts of things I want to do that an avatar doesn't want doesn't need to do, and but that means uh, uh, animesh isn't allowed to do it. This is supposed to be a sail for a sailboat, and it's flapping in the wind. So I thought this was going to be great. I would build a tall ship. I would put. 14 sails on it, all of the sails would be flapping in the wind and life would be great. But there aren't enough bones in the bento avatar to 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 make all the sails uh, flap. I'm not allowed to make each sail a copy of each other with the same bones because the, the bones are all moved together and all the rules conspire to make it impossible to build a sailboat with a lot of sails, uh, maybe a, a sloop with three sails. I can I can use the left and the right hand and the face bones for the for the spinnaker. But oh, then I'd run out of uh, of bones for some of the other uh, parts of the of the boat that I want. And so I'm I'm uh, uh, unhappy about that kludge. And I teach a class every Wednesday. And if I forget to mention it, I've invited everyone at OSCC to come to that class. And watch me do a speed build of a uh, of a mesh object, and and in that class, one of my students a couple of weeks ago said, "You must hate animesh." Uh, oh, I skipped. Did I? Did I skip a slide? Because it's supposed to be talking about how um, how it um, yeah how these rules uh, ruin my day. You must hate animesh. Well, no, I don't hate it. 
I, I wish that I could do more things with it, but uh, I, there, I'm finding a lot of things I can do. I can't do the sailboat I want, and I can't do water. I had this vision that I would make water out of animesh, and this is just an eight by eight patch of water, so it has 64 bones. And well, animesh, you're allowed to have uh, 159 bones, so that should be enough, but most of those bones are used up in the hierarchy and you can't find 64 of them that, that are um, free to move independently. Like the M tail one moves the M tail two and the three and the four and the five and the six. And so all of those six bones, you can only use one of them to make an independently moving bone. So no, I don't hate Animesh. I just wish I could do more. However, there's only so many hours in the day and uh, and I can't, I can't finish, uh, I can't make all the things I want to make that, that stay inside the rule. The, and so um, it's probably just as well that there are rules preventing me from, uh, from making everything in the universe. So I don't have, as it turns out, a uh, Expo speakers booth because I have something better uh, in um, Expo uh, uh, Zone 4, Booth 22. I have the, the uh, um, ocean engineering booth there, and it's much larger. So I have dinosaurs wandering around there, and I have uh, sailboats uh, to show off. And most of the Animesh objects that you see here on the stage I, uh, I have them sitting out there and you can click on them. And every time you click on, or I, yeah, there, here's a rule of Animesh. You're not allowed to left click on them. You're only allowed to right click on them. So if you right click and hit touch, I guess you have to know that because I don't have a sign. Uh, they will switch between one animation and the next. And so you can see all the animations. Oh, people are starting to click on them already. <laughs> Uh, you can see all the animations that that they have inside. Obviously, uh, some of these things don't uh, didn't have animations to start with. So, how can you learn uh, to do this? <laughs> and the answer is, of course, uh, you have to learn Blender, and then you have to learn all of these these special rules about OpenSim. And a lot of the there are there are a million. Uh, uh, um, tutorials on YouTube, but most of them don't talk about specific open sim issues. And so uh, I had to, to figure a bunch of stuff out myself, and now I'm trying to share it with everyone. I have a class every uh, Wednesday morning. And like I said, next Wednesday is a special uh, OSCC class. And I also uh, be got uh, tired of doing the beginner stuff every Wednesday morning. And so I started a YouTube channel and it's a terrible channel. It has <laughs> horrible, horrible production quality because it's just a, a blender screen and me talking and, uh, and it's the editing is awful, but it has the essential information. For example, the thing that bugs me about a lot of tutorials is, is that they, they, they try and make you memorize the uh, the shortcut keys. So everybody knows that you hit A to do this and control A to do that and capital D to do that and lowercase D to do something else. And you have to memorize uh, like 128 keycaps before you can use Blender. And I say, no, you can learn Blender without memorization first. So I teach that in, in my YouTube channel. And it, it doesn't have a Patreon channel and I'm not trying to monetize it. It's just trying to get the information out there. Also, uh, Mike uh, Laurie, who gave the talk before this one, he teaches a Blender class every Sunday in Kitely. And so you could uh, go to that one as well. And as a matter of fact, I often show up there. And when Mike forgets to come and teach his own class, I am the guest lecturer. <laughs> that has happened. And... Yeah. Uh, And let's see, oh, uh, I, uh, I am going to have to run, but you can go to Expo Zone 4 and I have copies of all these slides there that you, there's Animesh for you to click on there. I'm not gonna be there after this talk because I have a family Christmas event to get to, but I will be around uh, the, the conference all day tomorrow and you may interrupt me anytime and ask any question about Blender. And if I know the answer, I'll even tell it to you.
<laughs> All right, kayaker. Gosh, thank you so much. And you guys, in the slides that he's talking about, you can pick up that. And there is, uh, he has the link to his YouTube channel as well in here. So you can get it all at his booth in Expo Zone 4, booth 22. So my, Kayaker Magic, thank you so much. Have a good holiday celebration. And uh -huh. um, thank you for sharing all your fantastic insights into Animesh. Okay, thank you for having me. All right. As a reminder to our audience, you will want to check out conference.opensimulator.org to see what's coming up at the conference schedule. Following this session, we have a little break, and our next session will begin at 3.30 p.m. It's entitled The Creativity and Writers Panel, so check it out. Also, we encourage you to visit OSCC 21 Poster Expo in the OSCC Expo 3 region and to find accompanying information and presentations and explore the hypergrid resources in OSCC Expo 2 region. Along with that, the sponsor and crowdfunder booths are located throughout all the OSCC Expo region. So jump around, have fun, enjoy yourselves in our break, and we'll see you back here at 3.30. Thank you.